Good morning. This is 1 in 36, a presentation from Anderson Center for Autism, celebrating their centennial in 2024. 1 in 36 is a weekly show devoted to autism spectrum disorder. Good morning and welcome to 1 in 36, the weekly talk show on topics related to autism spectrum disorder. I'm your host, Eliza Bozenski, Chief Development Officer at Anderson Center for Autism. And with me today is Debbie Goddard, who is a family and community educator at the Westchester Institute for Human Development. Debbie, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I've listened to your show a lot and now I get to uh, be part of it. So Now you're on. That's great. I love it. I never know who's listening and uh, I try to to keep it interesting and to um, present, you know, various resources and just information about what's going on in the field. So it's good to know that people are taking advantage of that. Um, so listener turned guest, um, Debbie, can you tell us, uh, just uh, tell us about yourself, you know, who you are, how long you've been with WID, um, you know, maybe how you, what brought you to this point in your, in your life, in your career? So I am um, first was a user of WID because I now have a 27 year old who was diagnosed with autism at two and a half. Okay. And so just starting the process, WID was incredibly, um, instrumental in just holding my hand and walking me through the process as any new parent who has just been hit with the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. It's frightening. It's overwhelming. And WID was really there. Um, I am one of those get it done, get it done, get it done. I'm going to solve his problems <laughs> kind of parent. And so I really took the opportunity to educate myself in everything autism, to try everything, to know everything, to be um, as much a sponge as possible so I could help him. And Wid was really good at, at walking me through that path. And I found that um, through their trainings, I learned so much. And when I didn't learn and I didn't understand, I went back again and again. Um, and that's what I mean in my, what I do now, I am one of those trainers who was, I was so fortunate enough to meet 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I am mm -hmm. now one of those people. And I tell parents all the time, I mean, this is a complex space. We're not going to get it all once. So feel free to repeat. Mm -hmm. Do it again. You didn't understand diploma options the first time, come back and listen again. You yeah. didn't know what OPWDD was the first time. It was too much. Go back and listen again. So, um, you know, having really used their services, uh, I was in a different field and I had this epiphany at some point that I was just running and running and running and I decided to take a break. And so I left my son with his dad for six months. I moved to Spain. I wasn't going to do anything special education for that period of time. And then while I was there, I said, you know what, I'm ready for a transition. So I came back, I reached out to WID and said, you know, I'd love to work here. I've loved the work you've done. And they said, you're hired. And so <laughs> I've been here for about five years and it's been incredible because I am able to give back all that they have given to me. And it's been really very rewarding. I love that story. I love the, the especially the aspect that you are now in a position where you're helping families who were you exactly. about, you know, 24 and a half years ago, right. Um, with your son, as he was uh, initially diagnosed, mm -hmm. not everybody has that opportunity. However, I do end up speaking with a lot of families who have a very similar mentality when it comes to getting to a certain point, however long it takes on their journey mm -hmm. to want to take all of the knowledge that they gained hard as it was to gain it and to soak yeah. it in and to understand it and and find and try to find ways to to bundle it or to present it yeah. with humor or to present it with story um in a way that that they think is more palatable or maybe will resonate more um mm -hmm. than it did when, when they went through it so many families parents become authors through this process i found um which is both cathartic i think and also really a feeling of giving back so i i love that you do that my guess is that you are able to present it in a way that is um maybe easier and and more accessible to families because oh, they know I, I totally try where they are you've been where yeah. they are yeah yeah totally totally mm -hmm. you know I get parents at all spheres in it right 
up to this morning, five uh, parents came in and said, we don't want to talk to you on the phone. We're coming into your office. And so that's where I was this morning. You know, one came and she brought, you know, three friends with her and she said, this is where we are. We want to just sit down and have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And they were each one of them were able to walk out with a takeaway, right? Something that they can go into their school district and act on. And I mean, and that to me is this incredible win when I can feel like somebody's taking away something that they can work with. And I mean, throughout my son's um, school career, I did the same thing. I mean, I started the scepter where we lived and I brought Mm -hmm. a lot of speakers in to come in. I mean, if two people showed up, I was thrilled. If 20 people showed up, I was thrilled because, you know, they're learning, they're learning and they're really walking through this journey and we all you know we all do it together so it's all about I mean I say you know I'm always in a teaching and a learning stance as soon as I've mastered it I'm going to share it with you I'm not keeping I'm not hoarding any of this information (laughs) I want everybody to know everything that I know well that I mean I think we need more of that in the world so thank you for doing that but let me ask you a little bit of I don't know if this will be a hard question or not for you but it's one that I think um I hear all the time but I don't know that people ask it out loud very often. Why do you think the information that you're finding ways to share with other parents is so overwhelming and and so confusing when it's uh, something that is also so important? I mean, I think number one, none of us anticipated being in this space, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, throughout our lives, we sort of have a trajectory of how we're going to acquire information and what we're going to need to know. But when you get plopped into this special education and disability space, this is nothing you've gotten any background on, right? Mm-hmm. So the learning curve is so steep. And in addition to that, the whole systems and the processes are done in this really convoluted way that doesn't make it accessible. It mm-hmm. really isn't. Um, fortunate enough for, st- you know, for students while they're in school, at least there's a guidepost, right? There's a CSE team, there's teachers, there's all these people in this one building who are working towards this common goal of helping you with your kid. Yeah. Once your kid gets out of school, it's the wild, wild west. I uh, call yes. it the don- I call it a donut hole because now everything is scattered to the wind. And you Mm -hmm. don't know that you need to do this first before you do this. You don't know that this one has no conversation with the other. And so they're literally a slew of doors and you have to figure out where does your kid fit? Where does your family fit? And how do you get the resources that you need in order to move on? Mm -hmm. And that's really hard and confounding. Yes. And I think, you know, and maybe you can talk about this a little bit too. Aren't there times at which or I should ask you more of a question. Were there times when you were going through this when your son was young and newly diagnosed where that level of inaccessibility and frustration kind of tempts one to stop looking? For me, no. Mm -hmm. For me, no. Because I was really clear in my mind of knowing what I needed my son to do. Right. I didn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't have an expectation that I was going to cure him. But I had the expectation that I was going to make him a functional human being in this world Mm -hmm. where there are certain things that he had to be able to do. And people would say, no, that's not going to happen. But I knew that in order for him to have a decent life, he had to do that. So Mm -hmm. I was always moving forward. Um, Absolutely. As I said, you know, I took six months off when I felt like he was in a good place And I focused on myself, but by focusing on myself, it really helped me also to restore myself, to come back really invigorated to continue this work. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I could, I could totally see that's why a lot of times when parents come to me and I might have a conversation with them and nothing happens, but they come back a year later when they're ready and when they're ready, same conversation. And then they have that momentum and they go forward and do it. And it's okay for me to have that conversation prematurely, you know, and it's okay for me to have that conversation when they're ready. I think, thank you for that. And thank you for your honesty about your own experience. I think it's all, you know, extraordinarily, you know, valuable and important because everybody is in a different place and and is, you know, going through this at their 
their own pace and as their own person. Um, one of the things that I love that I just think is, is really worth repeating, and then we're going to go into a quick break, but it's just what you said earlier, and you kind of repeated it just now, that the idea that um, it really is okay and important to, to be honest and, you know, with yourself and, and with you, if, you're, if they're working with you, right? I didn't get that. I didn't get it the first time. I Maybe I didn't get it the third time. Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to do it again and that there's validity to that and there's there's acceptance and understanding when it comes to that. Because um, I guess what I was saying before is I've talked to some families who end up feeling as though they're sort of never going to get it and I'm exhausted and I'm just kind of trying to get through every day. Um, so what you're presenting is you will get it. You can get it. It is okay that it's taking longer than maybe you thought it would. So, I mean, I, I think that's a really valuable message for parents, especially parents of newly diagnosed children. Yeah. I mean, and the other thing for parents to really always think about is that you don't have to get all of it. Mm -hmm. Is there one little piece that you got that you can work on, right? Mm -hmm. It's that that piece of fabric and you found that one thread and you're going to pull that thread. And then once you've conquered that thread, maybe you can go back for a second thread, right? So you don't have to sew the whole garment at once. Start right. with the sleeve, start with the collar. Whatever mm. is is workable for you, just take that piece and work with it. I agree. I think generally in life, the idea of when you're overwhelmed by something, taking one small step, no matter what it is, one phone call that day, you yeah, know, yeah. one... Um, one question on your to-do list instead of, and really write it down as one. Don't yeah. look at your whole list and try to pick yeah. one. Maybe it's a whole new page where it's just one Yeah, um, yeah. is so important when you're tackling kind of any new thing. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to ask you more about sort of the day-to-day of what services you provide and how people can access them. And and um, and we'll, we'll make sure people know how to get in touch with you. Yeah. This is One in 36, the weekly talk show on topics related to autism spectrum disorder. I'm your host, Eliza Bozenski, and we'll be right back. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Somewhere there's a river rushing through the woods while someone rushes through their day. There's a mountain looking up at the sky while someone looks down at their phone. A trail waiting to be walked while someone waits for a latte. This world is full of somewheres waiting for someone just like you. So go see yours at 154 National Forests and 20 Grasslands. And to learn more, visit nationalforest.org. The National Forest Foundation. See your somewhere. And now, 1 in 36 continues on 100.7 WHUD. This is a weekly community affairs program presented by the Anderson Center for Autism. Welcome back to 1 in 36, the weekly talk show on topics related to autism spectrum disorder. I'm your host, Eliza Bozenski, and I'm talking today with Debbie Goddard, who is the family and community educator with Westchester Institute for Human Development. And Debbie, it's been a really sort of enthusiastic and inspiring conversation so far. Um, So thanks for being on the show again. Thank you for having me. Um, You're very welcome. And I I think, you know, we're talking about a subject that's near and dear, obviously, to both of us. Um, You know, you shared sort of your background as a mom raising your son and and re- utilizing the resources um, that Wid offered when he was young and now getting back into that now as the family and community educator. Um, I come at my role with Anderson really from a place of, um, you know, my education is in social work, but a lot, every role I've played at Anderson, and I've, I've had many <laughs> um, over the years, is very connected to knowing the families, knowing the families who are on their journey, who have, you know, at, at the point they're coming to Anderson, they're typically at the point where they're considering residential placement for their, for their child on the mm-hmm. autism spectrum. So um, I've heard a lot of their experiences. Thankfully, families, I think more so and more so are sharing more of their personal experiences, both the highs and the lows to try to help other families coming in after them not feel so alone. Um, 
So on that note, let's just cover a couple of, of really important things. Can you give us a sense of the services that you're offering now and that WID offers and, and how people can find those services? Is there a website you want us to share or another sure. way for people to get in touch? So we do, I like to think the cradle to the grave. Um, WID as a, as a whole entity is really um, very embedded in the disability space. Uh, we are a medical facility. So um, as parents, I'm sure you've heard, you know, there's this struggle of finding the right caregivers for your kids, whether it's a doctor or, or an audiologist or, you know, a dentist. It's really a struggle because a lot of the medical profession really doesn't understand their kids. And if her kids are screaming in the waiting room, they're not as welcomed. Right. So mm-hmm. we really our Our business, we're in the business of being that safe space where you can bring your kid in all their actions and inactions and we can treat them, make you as a family feel welcome and and let you know that that kid is or that young adult or that senior citizen is really well cared for, respected and completely empathized with. And that's really a special space because there isn't a lot of um, of medical services that offer that. Huge gap, huge gap. Yeah. So as um, on the side, we are also not just looking at your medical, but we're also looking at your social. We're looking at where you are as a family. And my um, division, which is called the Community Support Network, we really are the family center. So um, if you're having trouble with school, right? You're having conflicts with your school. You're not quite sure what that parent letter that came home meant. You don't, you're not quite sure what that consent form meant. You're not quite sure, you know, what your child being alternately assessed means or Mm -hmm. all of those questions are things you can pick up the phone and call us, or you can get on our website and reach out and someone will get back to you um, and really walk you through that process. And Mm -hmm. as I said, it starts from early intervention and Mm -hmm. it goes right through. Um, We work under a state grant for New York State Office of of Special Education. And that grant really covers, um, you know, three to 21. But at Community Support Network, we go beyond that. So once a child has exited school, we're helping them with their benefits, we're helping them with housing, we're helping them with sort of carving out and forming a life for themselves Mm -hmm. and what that's going to look like after you're finished school. So we're introducing them to maybe college programs or or if they want to go to college or they want to learn a trade, where are the doors? What are the things that I need to do? How will Access VR help me? How will right. DD help you're, me? How will Office of Mental Health help me, right? Yes. All these myriad doors, we're kind of saying, okay, this is where you start. This is what you do next. And this is how you have it done. So two things. Thank you for all that. First of all, um, what is the, the website where one can get all this information? They can find it at wihd.org. Great. A nice, simple one. WIHD.org. Mm-hmm. But the other thing I was and thinking sounds, you, and Or if they can just type in Westchester Institute for Human Development, everything right will there. come up and then they can play around in there and see, you know, where they want to be. I think, I mean, you've hit so many topics The the huge gap in, um, in appropriately trained and sufficiently trained uh, medical professionals. Mm-hmm. I think really not out of a desire or a lack of desire for, on the part of the medical professionals, it's, we still have so far to go in terms of embedding this type of training for, um, about autism and other neurodivergencies and really anything outside of the sort of medical, truly, you know, really Mm -hmm. focused medical field in, and in, in medical schools and dental schools. We're, we're, we're kind of very interested in that area too, um, at Anderson, because that's an area where you see people again, making this really difficult choice of making it through the day, um, and, and, uh, and taking care of sort of the, the, the very right, right in your face needs of your child versus finding a dentist who's going to understand right. that, no, you can't just go, you know, your kid is not going to just walk into the dentist office. Maybe and everybody gets a little nervous, but sit in a chair and tolerate something like a cleaning or, or an evaluation. Yeah. So there's a lot more that goes into it. But the other thing that you really um, struck me <laughs> is um, I've also been, I've been with Anderson 17 years, the acronyms 
the acronyms, some of which are so similar, yes. um, some of which seem to make no sense. And just the number of things that you just off the top of your head threw out there, this doesn't make sense to me. This doesn't make sense to me. The letter and what does alternate assessment mean? I mean, I think that it's so great to have a resource like you and your team at the Community Support Network um, with Westchester Institute is because there's so much of that. Right. There's so much that you're getting, some of which is okay to say this is not relevant to me, but with no one helping you put them into the piles of really important need to get to at some point, right. not really relevant at all. I think it all must just snowball into everything is as important as everything else. And and it sounds like what you also help with is prioritization. Right. This is a big deal. This you can get to, this doesn't pertain to your child until they're 12 years old. Right. Your child is two. You've got some time. We hear about that all the time. So I would just, again, direct people to encourage people to go check out WIHD.org for more information. But let's just take these last couple of minutes because I want to end on a really positive note. Um, you do important work that's impactful. Can you think of a relatively recent experience that you had with a family or a parent where it just kind of warmed your heart or you felt like, you know what, this was really an, like an important moment? Mm -hmm. And we connected and I feel really good on the path that they're going to take now. Is there anything that comes to mind? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, my boss, Christy Leader, makes fun of me because I live in this in the, the the world of the starfish, right? There's this really great parable of this old man walking along the beach and, you know, all the starfishes have washed up and these young guys are just watching him. Every few feet, he throws another starfish back in the ocean. And they finally say to him, you know, why are you doing that? And he says, because to that starfish, it matters, right? There could be thousands of them washed up, but mm -hmm. for the one that I throw back in, it matters. And so for me, I'm all about the starfish, you know, and so a lot of families as their kids are exiting, they're struggling with with um, benefits. And so um, supplemental security income is one of them. And, you know, they reach out and they go, oh, my God, this is so overwhelming. And I walk them through exactly the steps. And then when they get it, they write me or they call and they go, oh, my God, it worked. Everything you <laughs> said worked. And I'm like, yeah, now go tell your friends, right? right. Because we right. want to always be spreading that word. And when I get those emails and those phone calls, I feel so elated because, you know, if people just have the tools and the understanding and somebody to hold their hands, they can get it done. Yeah. With guidance, they can get it done. Absolutely. And if they spread the word and somebody else can get it done. Right. So, yeah, I'm all about that one starfish. Just that bring one me starfish. my singles. Bring well, me my and singles the, and, the, and I'm and happy. The <laughs> and the starfish telling their friends in the ocean. Um but yeah. also, I think I want something. I love that story. That um, parable just makes perfect sense to me. But also, you know, the idea that that you're in this to help families feel empowered and that they can do things. And so, it sounds to me like this is a great opportunity to encourage people to, if you've gotten help from somebody, remember that you can also let them know that they helped you, and that. That to me is one of the things that makes this world crazy as it is. Mm -hmm. Keep going round and round and keeps bringing people into the field because um, it's a hard field to be into. It's a lot mm -hmm. of work and it's a lot of education and, and information, but, um, but it does, it does bring you joy, uh, obviously seeing when, you know, that you've been able to help somebody get to that point. Um, and so their joy becomes your joy. And I think that's just an important, um, important point and a nice way to end. Uh, but real quick, I know institute. that you have a transition yes. institute. Yes, some that event is starting this week on the 20, the 31st, January 31st okay. through February 2nd. Um, but it's all going to be recorded. So if you go on to our website, if you are, if you will have not been able to attend, you can find all the speakers, everything will be recorded um, along with the transcripts and the uh, PowerPoints, and there's going to be a really nice cross-section of things. We are really in the self-advocate space. You're going to see some self-advocates, the next generation of um, disability advocates stepping up and making their place in the world. So they're going to have a big part of the Transition Institute. We're going to be talking about um, post-high school options in terms of college 
and all that good stuff. So, and Great. finances, because finances is really a big part of it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's also pieces that, you know, sometimes we have to help families to remember that, you know, it's not just them and their spouses necessarily. Now you have a, a you know, family member with a disability. So making sure that you're retiring for three instead of two is a whole other realm in this space that should be considered. Yes. More, more to learn there. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, thank you for that. And, and uh, yes, by the time this airs and people are listening, um, the event itself will be over, but it's great that you're, doing such a good job of um, recording it and the transcripts, which also mm -hmm. always give people the opportunity to take in the information at their own pace. Right. So I think that's great. And remember for that information and for all of the information about uh, what Westchester Institute for Human Development can do for you and with you, go to WIHD.org. And um, Debbie Goddard, uh, family and community educator, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really love that you're out there doing your work in the world. And I, it makes me feel good about the community. And it was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Looking forward to hearing about it. <laughs> this is 1 in 36, the weekly talk show on topics related to autism spectrum disorder. I'm your host, Eliza Bozenski. And remember, Anderson cares. You've been listening to 1 in 36, a weekly presentation from Anderson Center for Autism, celebrating their centennial in 2024. Join them for another edition of the show next weekend.